Based on last Friday's employment report, the US economy is humming along nicely. There's always something to worry about. In Europe, energy prices are high, and there's a risk this will tip the region into a recession. Russia has a strong hand when it comes to natural gas supplies, and they've played it very well, never totally cutting supply off, holding out the hope that gas will still flow, creating maximum uncertainty for European policymakers. Putin has been smart. In the US, the yield curve is inverted, which some believe is warning of a recession. But an alternative explanation is that 10-year Treasury yields below 3% reflect continued strong demand from investors who don't need a return, like the Federal Reserve and other central banks. Low bond yields are disrupting the Fed's efforts to slow the economy. Although they're pushing up short-term rates, it's the long end of the curve that drives capital investment decisions and real estate. Interest rate sensitive sectors are sensitive to bond yields more than short term rates. The Fed is sitting with $8 trillion in securities that they're going to let shrink passively, but this will take a long time. $7 trillion of the $8 trillion they own has a maturity of five years or more. $4 trillion is longer than 10 years. If quantitative easing means buying bonds, the opposite, quantitative tightening, means selling them. Because the Fed has decided not to sell the bonds they bought during the pandemic, it's going to make it harder to bring inflation down. If you're interested in learning more about the energy sector and interest rates, then don't forget to subscribe and follow us on LinkedIn and Twitter. Our handles are in the description box below. When Treasury yields touched 3.5% a couple months ago, it didn't cause much of a slowdown. Employment stayed strong. So it seems that we need 10-year rates at least at 4% to have an impact. That's probably going to require the Fed funds rate at least at that level and maybe 5%, higher than currently priced in the Eurodollar futures market. As short-term rates move higher, the Fed will start to suffer negative carry on their bond portfolio. They gave $108 billion back to the Treasury last year. Their average yield was 1.5%, and their funding cost was close to zero. By 2023, this number could easily flip to where the Treasury has to cover the Fed's operating deficit. In theory, it shouldn't matter. It's a bookkeeping entry within the federal government, but it will make the deficit bigger. And I think you can expect Congress to ask questions about how this happened. Quantitative easing was a good response to the great financial crisis of 2008. But buying bonds is now part of the Fed's toolkit to fight a recession. Quantitative easing wasn't necessary during COVID. The economic impact was sharp but brief. The Fed overdid the stimulus in size and duration. It's helped cause today's inflation. And because they're not unwinding their bond purchases, it's as if they're fighting inflation with one hand tied behind their back. The Fed was wrong about inflation. They thought it was transitory, and it wasn't. If they follow that up with a recession, there will be some tough questions about their ability to make the right decisions to guide the economy. This is why inflation is unlikely to return to 2% anytime soon. The Fed doesn't want to push up bond yields that much. After adjusting for inflation, the real yield on the 10-year note is minus 6%. That is not tight monetary policy. In the past, it's taken real yields at least of zero to cause the unemployment rate to rise. Inflation will fall to be sure, just the way it's calculated means that year-on-year -year comparisons of the CPI will start to look better as the price levels of early 2021 drop out of the calculation. But getting back to 2% inflation is a long way off, and in our opinion, not that likely. We manage investment products to profit from the outcomes I've discussed. To find out more about what we're thinking, sign up for our twice-weekly blog at sl-advisors.com. We always love to hear from you, so if you have any comments or blog ideas, please leave them down below. I'm Simon Lack. Thank you for watching this video.